I'm Paula Roy. Welcome to my Wellington West kitchen. I'm here on behalf of the Wellington West BIA to bring you some more taste of Wellington West virtual programming. And we're calling this year's food festival the Spread Out Edition. And that's for two reasons. One is because the programming is spread out over four weeks from September 14th to October 10th. And also because we want to remind people to stay spread out and stay safe. So today I would like to share with you the gloriousness that is the charcuterie board. This is one of my favorite things for a family movie night or game night and also for socially distanced entertaining. There's so much you can do with a charcuterie board and it can be flexible, it can be fun, and it can also be filling. Depending on what you choose to put on your board, you can actually make a meal out of it. A lot, some people think of it as more of an appetizer thing, but when you stop to consider, if you go back to the board five, six, seven, eight times, if you put all those morsels on one dinner plate, that would be a pretty big serving. So consider that and perhaps put a little bit more on it and then you won't have to prepare any other elements for a meal. Now I've done a family style board here, but if you are doing socially distanced entertaining, you can find great boards at Maker House in Hintonburg, like this one, that is the perfect size for one or two people. So if you assemble individual ones and hand them out, everyone can stay apart, but still enjoy great conversation and some delicious food together. So it's a very social and enjoyable opportunity. So on my board, it's all about contrasts. I want a variety of textures and flavors and colors and even heights. So for example, I've got some roasted nuts here and I like to put them in a tall cocktail glass so that they kind of stand up above the level of the things that are lying down low. Now the name charcuterie means cured meats and of course that was the genesis of the original charcuterie board but over time we've come to expect lots more than just meat on our boards. Cheeses of course are very common and I get excited when I see that someone's put some smoked fish on there because I just love nibbling at that as part of this sort of tapas style grazing feast. And bread products are another common element. So in this case, I've included three. I've got these beautiful cheese stick crackers that I found at the Ottawa Bagel Shop. And they're really fun because you can wrap a slice of prosciutto around them and nibble it that way. I've also got something really crispy. So these artisan fruit and nut crisps are great because they're sturdy. So if you put on some cheese and some chutney, they're not gonna fall apart right away. I like to have a gluten-free option. So I like these round rice crackers that are commonly available and they're tasty and crunchy and people seem to really like them. And baguette, of course, is very common. You can slice it up and have it in a basket or you can take thinly sliced baguette, brush it with olive oil and bake it for about seven or eight minutes at 350 and make beautiful little baguette crisps. So that's another bread product option for your charcuterie boards. Now, in terms of meat, you wanna think about contrasting flavors. So you might go with a mild salami and a hot salami and maybe a creamy ham and roast beef if you like it. There's no rules. You get to pick what you like. But the name of the game is to make sure it's accessible for people. So what I've done with the salami, for example, is I've folded it into little uh, triangle shapes instead of just having the flat circles on the board. This way it's easy for someone to come with a fork and pick it up and put it on their own plate. Similarly with the prosciutto, I've rolled it so those little bundles are easy to grab. And you'll notice I've rested the meats on nasturtium leaves that are from my garden. That's great because it's a nice visual backdrop for the meat and it also keeps the oils off your board so it's easier to clean. If you don't have suitable leaves in your garden, these are edible so I know they're not gonna taint the meat. You can go to one of our local florists but be sure they understand that you're using the greenery for food purposes and they'll make sure that you get some that haven't been treated with chemicals. Now for cheeses, again, contrast is the name of the game. So I'd like to have at least one hard and one soft cheese. I've got an extra, extra, extra old cheddar here, and that's gonna be a little bit crumbly, so I'll probably slice off a bit for people to start them off, and then it can be a free-for-all after that. And I've got a nice soft cheese over here. If you're serving a whole wheel of cheese, like a brie or a camembert, it's a great idea to cut one little triangle out of it before you put it on the board, otherwise people might be too intimidated to be the first one to cut into it. Now for the other elements, I've got some grapes on here because I just really like grapes and cheese together. You could even do a separate board of fruit and have the two side by side and that could be a fun option. I've also got, these may look like olives, but they're actually pickled cherries and they're just so, so, so yummy. They're kind of spicy and sweet and a little bit sour and I love them with the meats and cheeses. Pickled blueberries are another good option or of course you could do olives. I have included some little cornichons or gherkins, so they're a sweet 
pickled baby cucumber, and those are very classic for this kind of presentation. I have made some of my maple whiskey grainy mustard, and it just tastes so good. It really helps elevate the flavor of the meats on your board. And I've also made some cranberry onion balsamic chutney that I just love with cheese and with meat. And the nuts I mentioned earlier, nice to have, again, something crunchy and salty. And finally, the real star of my charcuterie board since last year is honeycomb. And I know you're thinking, really, honeycomb on a charcuterie board? It's the bee's knees, pun intended, of course, and I really encourage you to try it. We have lots of great local beekeepers in the Ottawa area, and this is the time of year when honeycomb is available. So I've actually gone out and purchased a number of containers, and I've put them in the freezer. I didn't realize you could do that, but when I spoke with one of the beekeepers, they said, yes, that's the way to do it. And of course it makes sense because the beehives are outdoors all winter long, right? So uh, to take a little spoonful of the honey and wax, spread it on your bread, and then add on the cheese and or the meat. Oh my goodness, it's the most delicious combination. I can't stress enough how this will take your board from great to out of the park. So I really encourage you to add in some honeycomb. So again, think about colors and flavors and textures. I've put some nasturtium flowers on my board from my garden because they're so pretty and they are also edible. So that's kind of a fun option for people if they're interested. And just have fun with it. There's no rules. You get to put whatever you want on your board. So I hope that this gives you a little bit of inspiration for your next charcuterie fiesta. And if you do make a board, please take a picture and post it on social media with the tag Taste of Wellington West, and you'll automatically be entered to win a prize. And I just can't wait to tuck into this beautiful board. Happy nibbling.